There it is. Ah, yes. An actual SR McLaren. That's right. That's right. In the flesh. Uh, flesh is one word to use with this car, I guess, huh? <laughs> they got the seat covered. They do, yes. That's yes. probably by your request. So you've already got the full estimate on this thing? Yes. Hmm. And so I sent it here for an A service, which is more than an A service on a CL or something like that. It was right. just over two grand. Oh. And then they sent me an estimate for all the things. All the things. With tax, $34,565. $34,000. And, and the rotors would be another $20,000 oh, yeah, if you had to do that, but you don't, oh my. Welcome to Movies Garage, the dumbest automotive channel in all of YouTube. And today is a very exciting day because we have just wrapped the latest car trek, which is sponsored by Auto Tempest. The best way to search for a used car, all the major listing sites in one search. And you searching on Auto Tempest, link below, actually makes car trek possible. We're able to do so many amazing things with our dream cars. But now that we're finished, I was very excited to line up my SLS with Ed Bullion's SLR McLaren. But as you can see, there's no SLR McLaren here for the same reason why I didn't buy one of those and instead got the SLS. So for the purpose of today's video, let's just pretend that the 300TD is an SLR McLaren and we'll actually go see a real SLR McLaren with a very famous ownership history here in a little bit. But my SLS AMG, it's a 2011 6.2 liter V8, even though it has a 6.3 badge, 563 horsepower, power, beautiful gullwing doors. This was the first Mercedes built by AMG designed from the ground up. Before the SLS, AMG was always transforming existing vehicles. Back when they were an independent tuning company or after when they were acquired by Mercedes, this was the very first car that AMG got to design on their own engineer from the ground up. And it is incredibly special. The SLR McLaren, on the other hand, well, it was designed in partnership with McLaren, the legendary racing brand that had just come off of making the F1. And the McLaren SLR was built in England, had a 5.4 liter supercharged V8, putting out 617 horsepower with a normal automatic gearbox. Crazy cool bihedral folding doors. Just an incredible, amazing piece of engineering. But it's also a big piece of, well, you know. Now, back when I bought this SLS a year ago, I was agonizing over whether I should get this or an SLR McLaren. And I consulted my friends, Freddie Tavares Hernandez and Ed Bullion on which one. And I was actually discouraged from buying the SLR McLaren because of, well, several reasons. Number one, the maintenance costs are ridiculously high. They're also not the most reliable cars and selling them is very difficult, apparently. They sit for sale for a long time. So that's the reason why I went with the SLS. It's much easier to find, much more affordable to keep running, unless the transmission goes. This one has a rear-mounted dual-clutch transmission that, uh, well, $30,000 when it blows up. Fluid change is important in the right place, too. Anyway, a much better performing car and looking car, in my opinion. And of course, it pays homage to the legendary Goldwing 300SL, which is my ultimate dream car. So I make the decision, I buy this car instead of the SLR McLaren. And then just recently, within the last few months, I see the perfect SLR McLaren coming up for sale on a dealer wholesale website. Formerly owned by Paris Hilton, the iconic one where you see the three of them, Lindsay Lohan, Britney Spears, and Paris Hilton riding off from the club 15 years ago in it. The one Paris Hilton got her DUI in and was later repossessed, coming up for sale at a dealer auction. I thought it was so cool. I shared it with Ed and Freddie in our group chat. And the next day I was watching the auction, planning to make this video talking about that car and why I didn't buy it and favored the SLS. And I look at the bidding and I see Switch Cars bidding, which is uh, Doug. That is a guy who is friends with Ed that has appeared in numerous VinWiki videos. And I see he wins the SLR McLaren for $180,000. And I'm very, very surprised. So I message Ed, what's up with this? And well, he bought it. The night before I had sent him this link and the next day he had impulsively bought Paris Hilton's SLR McLaren. I was very jealous, also very excited for him, but I knew then I would get the opportunity to review both cars side by side like I wanted to do right now. But then the unthinkable happened. The SLR is not available and it, well, come here. Why can't I not drive an SLR McLaren today? <laughs> because an A service turned into a bit more. Oh, so I guess instead of reviewing the SLR McLaren side by side uh, with the SLS, uh, we can just head to the Mercedes dealer, see it up on the lift, uh, do and everything's wrong, I suppose. I suppose that's much more your brand than mine. So yes, by all means, we can go and see how it is. I, I drove one 15 years ago. 
So it's been that long. I sat in Jay Leno's, but I, it's been a long time. I really wanted to experience it, but I, I guess I'll, I'll take what I can get. Maybe I'll bring it to Kansas one day. That sounds good. Well, shall we? Let's do it. SLR would be nice right now, but uh, I am pretty happy with what I have. I think you should be. I mean, I think this is a car that you could own forever without knowing that it was going to horrify you with some terrible maintenance experience, you know? Yes. Yeah, I think it suits you. Thank I, you. Uh, yeah, I just think the way that you, you, just, you know, there's sometimes you get out of a car and it feels like Tyler should have gotten out of that car, and then there's sometimes where Tavares gets out of a DBS and you just think, <laughs> what? So an SLR McLaren suits you? I don't know about that. It's yeah, so it's odd idea. because you never, I've never seen you impulsively buy something that's true like that. Like you had to have it. Obviously, you're not a Paris Hilton super fan. No. She no. is the original social media influencer <laughs> that, that created what we do, but I mean, you're not a super fan. No, not at all. And nor am I a Britney Spears or Lindsay Lohan super fan. I just, I felt, I've always kind of wanted an SLR. I loved supercars in the mid 2000s. It was certainly the time when I wanted to own them all, and I like looking like I won the lottery about then. But I, no, I, I wasn't just immediately wowed by it. I just knew that given the way it was presented in the auction that you sent me, that it, it wasn't going to bring the moon. Mm -hmm. And if it didn't, then I felt like there was minimal exposure. Now, that may not have been true. Yeah, you talked me out of an SLR McLaren. For the exact same reason why we were going to your SLR McLaren right now. Correct, yes. And, and I will say, and I think you might agree once you spend more time in it, which hopefully we can do before too terribly long, it's a little more special to be in it than this. I mean, the, the roof line and the doors of this are super duper awesome, mm -hmm. but below the waistline, it's an SL. But yeah, it feels like a car you could just use whenever you want to. And I don't feel that way about the SLR. Yeah, this is nice to go to dealership and get an estimate on a car that's not mine. So this is actually quite relaxing for me. I'm looking forward to this. <laughs> that's not been my experience this week. I mean, I, I took it for an oil change. There it is. Ah, yes. An actual SLR McLaren. That's right. That's right. In the flesh. Uh, flesh is one word to use with this car, I guess, huh? <laughs> they got the seat covered. They do, yes. That's yes. probably by your request. I. Well, actually, I dropped it off at the Mercedes dealer that's north of me that I usually use that prep the CL for Cannonball and all the other things. And they told me that they were SLR qualified, and then they decided they weren't. And so they shifted to the southern location. That's where we are now. It's been over 10 years since I've driven one. It's, it's not bad. No, it's not. Maybe a little more cramped than my car, but still... It is, usable. yeah, and the one-piece seats are a little bit of a compromise, but I, I fit it pretty well. No, they came in, obviously, sizes, the seats. These are mediums, mm. ordered new by Paris Hilton. Very nice. Yes. The same critique on my SLS is the same here with the generic uh, radio and climate controls, the shifter. Yep. Of course, the slush box. What do you think of the slush box? Well, I like it because with all aging supercars, the biggest fear in general is catastrophic transmission failure. Mm -hmm. And so one of the things about this car is you don't have to worry about that. They're everywhere and they don't break. Yeah. Push button start exactly. there. Exactly. Exactly. Gauges. I yeah. think you're right. I think it just does feel a little more special than an SLS. But just, it comes with some drawbacks. I suppose. Yes. That's why it's here. Exactly. I'll go to the hood. All right. Bye famous seat where things happened. Lindsay Lohan, <laughs> Britney Spears, Paris Hilton in this car. Just amazing. The doors, they're not gold wings, but they are very, very cool. It's very clear throughout the car that McLaren had certain things they cared about doing and a lot of things they didn't care mm -hmm. about doing. Obviously, the engine, a lot of the electronics, the infotainment, all, they don't care. They wanted to build a tub, they wanted to build a chassis, they wanted to build a car and do some of the design work while keeping it obviously within the Mercedes language. I kind of like the SLS, the engine, Yo, yeah. way behind the front wheels, it's basically mid-engine, but this this nose, my nose is long, this is, this is very, very long, and the hood, the hood hinges look a little wonky. Here. They do, and they're currently very, very weak, so one thing it's here for is strut replacement, uh, and the other problem is, due to the way that it opens, uh, somebody must have slammed it down 
at some point when it's changed hands in the 2,000 miles it's accumulated over the last 10 years. They broke it over here. There's tracks That's crazy. that these casters land in. Mm -hmm. So you open it forward a little bit and then you pull it out and you lift from here. So this has been fabricated by the uh, nice man to save me $3,500. Oh, so you've already got the full estimate on this thing. Yes. Hmm. And so I sent it here for an A service, which is more than an A service on a CL or something like that. It was right. just over two grand. Uh, and then they sent me an estimate for all the things. All the things. I'm looking forward to seeing a list of this because it'll it'll reassure me of what I did because you told me not to buy one of these and then you go and buy it and I get frustrated with you. But well, you I, can't not buy this one. I, I, you're right. You're right. So you get, did they text it to you? Is it yes. a piece of paper? What's the yeah, damage? These turbine wheels are so cool too. Beautiful. And the gills. And the early ceramic brakes. I mean, it's such an artifact of the mid 2000s, not just because of the pop culture right. influence, but I mean, it just is everything done its own way. And there's not anything else like it. I mean, you could say a speed tail, one of these, uh, there, there's a new mm. word for it. I don't know what it is. It's something like Grand Touring Hypercar thing. Yeah. I don't know what it really is. All right, back down there. Yes. Okay. All right, so Run the, it down. the A service was 2105. <laughs> they want to put a power steering pump on it because they didn't really, they haven't seen one in a long time, but it does steer in a peculiar way. They all do, but they think this one's extra weird. $2,220 for that. I don't think I'm going to do it until we feel more confident that's it. But they said if it's not that, it's the $6,270 steering rack. Holy moly. Wipers, fairly reasonable, $105. <laughs> <You wanna laughs> that's do that. about right. Yeah. Approved. Uh huh. Uh, they said this wheel's bent. A uh, replacement used, they could find you. They couldn't get a new one, $18.99. Hmm. Uh, they want both new batteries because the aftermarket garbage one that's in there won't anchor right. They want $1,350. Oh my. <laughs> this, if they hadn't fabricated this, was $3,405. Hmm. They want to replace the weather stripping. It's at my house, it fell out. It was a show that, right. that I'm not going to do, but it was $1,350. Okay. So when you open the passenger door, it stops here rather than going all the way up to there. So a strut? This str how much do you think this strut costs? Uh, 1000 bucks. $2,500. $2,500? Yes. The, there were some mounts for the brake lines that they insisted I do. Okay. Uh, $1,350. Holy crap. For the mounts. Okay. Uh, they said that it's not safe. Were they missing or just? They, yeah, they had deteriorated and cracked some. I don't, I don't, I don't know. Ah. Um, yeah. Uh, one of the washer nozzles is in out five hundred dollars. Mm. Missing TPMS sensors all around seventeen hundred dollars. Not a universal there. Oh, oh. <laughs> this, the fuel cap tether is broken. $100. Oh, hundred dollars for that. Oh dear. The tire a... fit container is missing. I don't even know what that is. I, I guess that's the like the fix a flat. I don't know what. I, but they wanted mm. two hundred fifteen dollars for that. Lovely. They said the brake caliper cooling ducts are deteriorated. Twelve hundred and fifty dollars. Okay. They said the rear diff is seeping, but they think it's just the seal around the drain plugs. They want to replace the drain plug and service it for 850 bucks. I told them they could do that. Holy crap. And then there's okay. a lot of things that are like by time. Mm -hmm. So one of the things the F1 was known for is that everything times out. So the yes. fuel bladders and all the things. And yes. so they still have some of that. And so just based on time, they wanted new dry belts, cooling system flushed to replace the wheel bolts, which are holding the wheels on. Right. Uh, flush the brakes. I want a new key battery. Oh, engine air filters even though but the brakes are weird on this car and that's one of the big drawbacks where you kind of talked me out of it was the brake feel being weird the electronic brakes that was a plague for mercedes of this era so uh, this is the best feeling braking slr that i've driven i've probably different five or six of them but it is weird so it's bottom hinge from the floor and you have to, the engine makes so much torque at idle that you really have to hold the brake down to stop it from bumping into stuff and so the, the handling feels strange, the mm -hmm. brakes feel I strange, remember. and the visibility and the dimensions I wish of the I car. could drive it to where I could talk about this, I but I can't. So yeah, I, how much is a brake flush? The brake flush, $1,250. $1,200 for a brake flush. And I mean, they're, okay. they're Gen 1 ceramic brakes, kind of right. like, you know, 996 CCBs. Right. But uh, that still seems a bit excessive. I, I'm yeah. confident my fluid. The rotors right. are quite expensive too, but they didn't recommend they that. They did not recommend that. Like, yes. I think it's 20 some odd grand. Yeah. For that. Insane. So, In I, I 20 grand. That was the other scary track. thing. Yes. With tax, $34,565. $34,000. And, and the rotors would be another $20,000 oh, yeah. if you had to do that. But you don't. Oh my. But I mean, they'll probably last. I mean, it's got 21, 22,000 miles on it. They'll probably last another 30,000 miles. The rotors. Now, the pads are still expensive, but that's probably only three grand. $30,000. So that's. 
More than what you made selling me that Mercy Lago, you've now that lost is. it on this Paris Hilton McLaren that I found for you. You're Ed, so you're not fixing all those things, I'm sure. No. <laughs> you're just driving it. Yeah, exactly. I mean, most of those aren't drivability concerns. The ones that are safety related, obviously, I'll do, but uh, at the end of the day, it's it's a car. It drives, it does everything you want. I like the color combination a lot. I got to experience one for a day, but it was a long time ago before I had driven really much of anything exotic. So I wanted another experience. I had ridden in Jay Leno's when I was on a show at the Cameo, so I've been in Jay Leno's. So the, probably the two most famous McLaren SLRs I've now, I've now sat in. This one and well, Leno's, but this one obviously the most famous one. And you bought the sunshade, right? I did. Well, next time I come back... We're driving it. I'm driving it, but here it is. The SLR McLaren Paris Hilton's. Uh, don't buy one. I'm, I'm very happy with my decision that you talked me into the SLS because me I'm too. enjoying that car so much. There's no anxiety driving that car, unlike, unlike this. This is a totally different world. So thank you for watching.